Hey, it's Michael, and this is the Kintsugi Podcast. I'll be back in a minute with today's conversation about resilience. But first, if you're interested in creating a better life, having a better career, please visit kintsugipodcast.com and grab your free workbook on how to have a better life. In it, you'll discover tips and routines so you can find the energy for the things and the people who matter most so you can create a better tomorrow and create the life and career you desire. So when did you decide to show up for life differently? Maybe start a new habit, see things from a different perspective, maybe change how you lead. What was special about that moment that made that moment the moment that would change all future moments for you? Why change then? I recently came across a quote that I had known way back when, but it just sort of popped into my feed, if you will. And there's a lot of debate about the origin of the quote, but here's the quote. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Again, much debate on who said it. Personally, if you're a Karate Kid fan, as I was back in the day, it seems a little Karate Kid to me. Could be sort of grounded in Buddhism. Who knows where it came from? But it's an important quote. It's an important feeling. Like when we're ready, the teacher will appear. So again, doesn't necessarily matter who said it, because the vital question is this one. What made you change way back when? Or perhaps you're contemplating a change. What will it take for you to get through the resistance? As if you heard the conversation last week, or with Stephen Pressfield, we talked all about that, the resistance. Well, my hunch is that your answer is pretty clear. It's all about awareness. One moment, you didn't necessarily have it, but the next moment, you had an opportunity to see things completely differently, maybe clearly for the first time, even though it was always right there in front of you. Here's the trouble, I think, with current life. And this was the case back before my accident, my last bad day. I was spinning on my hamster wheel. And I think current day, we're spinning faster on the hamster wheel. Go, 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 24-7, 365. We have to work hard, which I'm a big believer in. But we don't have any time for recovery. We have no time, at least we believe, to pause, breathe, and reflect. Open up our aperture and have greater awareness for this Beautiful gift called life. So clarity is really difficult when we're busy on our hamster wheel. Well, 20 years ago this weekend, as I record this, this student, aka me, met one of his new teachers. It was a life-changing moment. Like Elvis and normal, given what we've gone through in 2020, this teacher's Teenage years have now left the building, but she still helps me stay mentally young, mentally strong or sharp because she holds up a lot of new lenses for me to see through. So this conversation about resilience is all in honor of my youngest daughter, Grady, who turned 20 over the weekend. Now, I'm not sure about you, but often we can learn from the younger generation. And I know not everyone out there has kids. Given my wife's profession as a childbirth doula, we know that not everyone is a couple. We know not every couple can or wishes to have children, while others are quite grateful for their kids, as we are for our two daughters. And, you know, the interesting thing about parenting, sort of going back to the student and the teacher, there comes a point in time where you have to like sort of accept that Maybe the student has been the teacher all along, or when it comes to parenting, the child has been parenting the parent all along. And I think that might be the case now that our teenage years in our household are over, as I look back. And she has provided, both of my daughters, but today is about Grady. 
they provided me with some beautiful lessons. So they appeared when I was ready. Now, there's a whole bunch I can share with you as far as lessons learned over the last 20 years with Grady in my life. But we'll start with this one. And it's really the spirit of the Kintsugi podcast. So it goes back to a moment when we were watching a movie together. She was eight years old. And she was sort of stroking my skin grafts, my, all my scars from my accident, from my last bad day. And I was really nervous to ask her this question, but I did so anyway. Way. I said, hey, grades, what do you think of my scars? And she was like, I think they're cool, dad. And that moment was a moment that changed all my future moments. Through her love, maybe through the lens of innocence. The thing is, is that her whole life, because I had my accident when she was just seven months old, I tried to keep my imperfections, those scars, away from everyone. I did my best tried to, to try to just cover them up. I didn't think they were like marks of courage and resilience. I saw them as weakness. So I didn't want anyone to see them. I armored up. I masked up. I did all that I could. I wore long pants when it was scorching hot. You name it. I tried to do it. And in that moment, I was like, wow, like if she can see them as something cool, why can't I? And she helped me realize that, hey, after all, we are all perfectly imperfect. We are like Kintsugi art, hence the Kintsugi podcast. We might break like pottery, but we can be put back together more beautifully. The golden repair, as they call Kintsugi art. When pottery breaks with gold fillet, they put it back together, it makes the scarring feature to the pottery. And I believe it looks even more beautiful. She helped me see that. She helped me see that our scars will throw in some wrinkles, gray hairs, blemishes, you name it. That's the stuff that makes us beautiful, not a whole bunch of filters on Instagram. And those blemishes and scars and all that jazz, they also tell this remarkable story of resilience. So I was the student, she was the teacher, and she taught me that we're all perfectly imperfect. She brought my attention or placed my attention onto the beauty of our imperfections, which then led to this moment, the Kintsugi podcast, where we get to talk about stories of resilience. There's another one, another lesson that she's taught me. And that's all about visioning. Some could call it manifestation. You can call it whatever you wish to call it. But she had this vision back in sixth grade that she was going to go to school in California. Keep in mind, we live in New Jersey and five hours away in almost every direction except due east because due east would put you in the Atlantic Ocean. There are so many outstanding universities and colleges, but she was steadfast in her vision. She was going to go out to California. As I used to say in my corporate sales role as a VP of sales, plan your work and work your plan. I think I borrowed it from the great Zig Ziglar. And if it wasn't for COVID, she would be enjoying her sophomore year in beautiful Claremont, California. She made it happen. Now, visioning is one thing. Manifestation is maybe a similar thing. But you also have to put in a whole bunch of sweat in order to create your success. She will definitely tell you that. But what she showed me is that if you want a strong core, not the six-pack ab core, but the core of your identity, who you are, where you're going, well, you need a clear vision. Because if you don't know where you're going, every road will take you there. So the third one I'll share with you today, because three is the magic number. If you're a fan of Schoolhouse Rocks, which I was growing up, you know that three is the magic number, so we'll give you three today. She also helped me see the power of consistent passion over time. And that can really drive change. It can also open up greater awareness because that's the big thing. Like without awareness, we can't make that change. The moment can't be the moment that changes all future moments. 
So back when she was nine, she, she switched to a plant-based diet. And over the years, we did our typical American diet. It was healthy, but it definitely had animal protein in it. So we did our thing and in classic, hey, you do you boo type of way. She did her thing. But I was watching. I was curious. As the years went on, my awareness started to grow bit by bit by bit. And then in 2019, she challenged my belief system with a few provocative questions. You know, I grew up in a very Irish meat and potatoes type of household. So I had this belief, like, well, this is just what you eat. I think as many people do. And so she challenged my thinking. And as a result of her challenge, I decided to go plant-based as well for two months. And I've been plant-based ever since. And what it showed me was that regardless of how old you are, you can change, right? You can teach an old dog new tricks. That's possible. But with greater awareness, and that was the thing she was doing, she was passionate about her plant-based approach. She wasn't over the top, but she was passionate. She was disciplined. And by role modeling the behavior that she wishes to see in the world, she helped others slowly change their awareness. And that would be me in this particular case. And she also validated what leadership is all about. I just mentioned the role modeling. So good leaders role model the behavior that they want to see in their company or society or whatever it may be. But it's also about understanding a greater purpose. It's passionately painting that aspirational future. So know your purpose and say, hey, we're going over here. You want to come with us? It's also about challenging beliefs. You got to create a some tension in order to drive change and then inviting other people to come along as she did. That's how things change. Now for her birthday, for her 20th, I've decided to go vegan with her because she's now vegan. So I'm going vegan for a month between her birthday and Thanksgiving. I'm going to give it a whirl and see how the whole experience goes. So that was another thing that she taught me all about. Now I was recently interviewed for a book by a colleague and a dear friend of mine. And she asked me, Michael, do we learn more or less as we age? And the answer I shared with her was this. I think we have the possibility to discover more as we age, but so often as we get older, we get in our own way. We allow stuff to get in our way. We build up walls, we armor up, we put blinders on. We do all that jazz because it's easier just to like feed our addiction to being right, to feed our belief system. And then when that happens, we can't see what those around us can see. And I think this especially happens as we get older. So sometimes the best thing we can do is not to learn something new, but to unlearn stuff, challenge our belief systems, open up our aperture. And that usually happens. The unlearning is when we step into a new perspective or try to see things through a fresh lens, a different lens. Perhaps it could even be in the spirit of beginner's mind. And sometimes that can't happen until you really connect with those younger than you are. Again, I know not everyone has kids that listen, but you might have a niece or a nephew or you, you know some younger folks the way that they look at the world can be really valuable for us more mature folks or older folks in challenging our worldview, challenging our beliefs to open up our awareness so we can have moments that can change all future moments for the better. So today, and as you listen, because I won't gush and gush about Grady, which I certainly can and probably get choked up as well, I'm going to invite you to pause, breathe, and reflect on this. What have you learned from someone younger than you are? Maybe your kids, if you have kids, a niece or a nephew, or maybe just someone in the neighborhood, you name it. What have you learned from them? What have you discovered about yourself? How have they shifted your perspective? If you have something, I would love for you to share it with me. I know this, that 
Over the last 20 years, Grady has shifted my perspective on so many different things. She has opened up my awareness. She's made me a better person. And I'm sure that those that can help shape, shape your perspective, shift your perspective, have also made you a better person. And that's how we get better over time. That's how we become more resilient. Because when we fall down, and we're going to fall down, we all know that. We get back up, but we get back up with more awareness. So we head in a slightly different direction. That's the type of resilience I love. Is that when we fall down, we get back up, but we get back up just a little bit smarter. And we head in a slightly different direction. Because falling down and getting back up again, over and over again, it doesn't, well, sort of like doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. You know, Einstein's definition of insanity is sort of in that spirit. So again, I encourage you to pause, breathe, and reflect and think about what you've discovered from the young ones in your life. And then let me know what those are. And real exciting news, sort of just on the merchandise front, because I know a lot of people have asked, we now have pause, breathe, and reflect tees in different colors. We're coming out with a entirely made in the USA sweatshirt, super soft, and hats. So those will be on my website michaelobrienshift.com if you want to check those out. But if you have a question about anything about this conversation, about resilience or about Grady and lessons learned or, or all that, all any of that jazz, you can go to kintsukipodcast.com and leave your question there. And I will do my best to answer it as quickly as possible. So again, thank you for listening, subscribing, leaving a comment. I hope you take a moment this week to pause, breathe and reflect. We're going to need it as we go through the next two months. And of course, and as always, have fun storming the castle. We'll talk to you next week.